So in this series we're following Gary Kasparov's life and his chess career and today we're continuing again the series with the 1983 candidates finals in which Gary Kasparov met the legendary Vasily Smyslov. So this is now our last game from every candidate that uh, Gary Kasparov will play in his life. Uh, now when uh, we finish this game, Gary Kasparov will meet, of course, Anatoly Karpov in the Super Final. And uh, I'm really looking forward to cover the Super Final between Karpov and Kasparov because, in my opinion, it was one of the most important chess events from the 20th century. But still, we are now in the uh, candidates' finals in which, as I said, um, uh, Gary Kasparov had to face a strong opponent, of course, Vasily Smyslov. So let's check out now the last game from the Super Final. Here, uh, Smyslov played with the white pieces and opened with the move d4. Kasparov played d5. Uh, we have knight to f3, c5. After c4 and e6, we have the Taras defense by uh, Gary Kasparov. We have really already uh, some dynamics in the center. So, one of the mo most important things when you have dynamics in the center, you want uh, to have a clarification first of all, and you want, don't want to risk maybe to get an isolated pawn. But as I always like to say, there are rules to play with an isolated pawn and to how to play against an isolated pawn. So here, uh, Vasily Smyslov plays uh, one of the most uh, natural ideas, c takes d4, we have e takes d4, and now you see after potential d takes c5 or c takes d4, uh, whoever takes, black is continuing the game with an isolated pawn. So what black wants to do is white to take maybe d takes c5 and then the bishop comes out with the tempo so that's why uh here the main line is g3 delaying situ simply the situation here in the center we don't want to take uh no one wants to take basically uh that uh, of course if c takes d4 happens then this knight comes very actively into the game so that's why both players are trying to keep the tension as long as they can so here knight to f6 bishop to g2 uh, bishop to e7, still normal theory of uh, this very nice opening. We have castling and castling also by Gary Kasparov. Smyslov, Smyslov plays the normal knight to c3 and we have now knight to c6. And now, if we remove bishop to g5, basically it's black now in main lines uh, of this particular opening is black has to really now show his cards so uh, either black will pl try to move these are the most natural ideas in my opinion c4 or he'll take uh, c takes d4 so okay in the game kasparov took c takes d4 after maybe c4 the game becomes maybe a more slightly better for white because knight to e5 can happen you cannot really take knight takes e5 uh, d takes e5 the you see the d file gets opened uh, uh, we can get rid of the defender of the d5 uh, we, we see, we see uh, here we have three attackers against a very weak pawn on d5 so that's why taking out is not the possibility but i think what white can do is build simply his attack around this very centralized knight on uh, e5 can even push f4 e3 even h3 g4 so in this particular line white will attack on the king side and black will try uh, to attack on the queen side with maybe a6, b5, and maybe b4 pawn breaks your motifs. But here, c takes d4, played by Kasparov. He wants to still keep this game a little bit more dynamic because uh, that's uh, basically the difference. After the move c4, the position is static because we have really a compact and blocked pawn structure. Now, after c takes d4, the position is dynamic, and we know that Gary Kasparov really loves the dynamic game, so that's why c takes d4, knight to d4, and now h6, kicking away the bishop, bishop to e3, and now uh, rook, to, uh, rook to e8. So, if you try to kick away this knight, it's not so good because... Uh, um, you can take knight takes d5 okay maybe uh here knight takes e3 can happen f takes e3 maybe bishop to g5 attacking the weak pawn on e3 uh, you cannot take with the knight uh, the pawn on e uh, the, the bishop on e3 because you lose the the knight on d4 so that's why you have to recapture with the pawn but still in this line i think queen to b3 solves all of the position problems we can play rook to d1 and i see only really on all one uh, game in this particular line and one uh, white one this game very very easily so it's not good here to attack the bishop with knight knight to g4 so that's why rook to e8 we have a3 and play by kaspa uh, play by smith of pardon me here bishop to e6 and now comes knight to e6 after f takes e6 we have queen to a5 uh, a4 you cannot really play uh, something like d4 uh we can play maybe even rook to d1 but i think the most powerful move is bishop to c6 
after b takes c6 we can take uh, queen takes d4 and we have grabbed the pawn this two pawns are isolated uh, they are of course weaknesses in the continuation of the game so that's why it's not an option to create this fork idea what black needs now to do is to keep the position compact somehow because we don't have any more the bishops on the board but as a compensation what we have basically is the pawn central control so it means we have now two centralized pawns this is very important if we advance the pawn here from black's perspective on e5 then black could have a comfortable game and then uh, maybe d4 is a serious threat so uh, here king to h8 because the gary kasparov has left uh, has given up uh, his life for bishop he is also vulnerable now uh, he has of course some life score problems in front of the king so that's why he maneuvers the king uh, to the dark side to uh, to the dark side no to the dark squares uh really a cool cool quote uh, he's moving his king to the dark uh, to the dark side okay i'm watching too much of this um, star wars series okay uh here king to h8 uh, we have uh, rook to d1 uh, keeping the position really dynamic on the default because if uh, as i said if black connects these two pawns somehow here in the center you see it could be really risky all of these minor pieces could be an object of the pawns in the center uh, of uh, an object of the attack so that's why rook to d1 very important because e5 now is not possible knight to d5 rook to d5 and similar ideas will happen so rook to c8 uh, here king to h1 not the best of moves maybe uh, queen to h4 here is slightly better for uh, Vasily Smyslov because here king to g8 or maybe you could try something like I, I don't know knight to a5 I wanted to show you how risky this line would be for Gary Kasparov because now we could even try bishop to h6 this would be I think really really tricky to handle because let's see now after g takes h6 queen to h6 and maybe king to uh, g8 you could try knight to e4 getting another attacker into the game this wasn't played in the game but uh, here Smyslov missed some I think uh, good opportunities against Gary uh, here after knight to e4 uh, you could maybe try rook to c4 but now queen to g6 and now knight to g5 is very risky you have to protect somehow here uh, this f7 uh, you have to play something like rook to f8 but now uh, here knight to e6 can happen then we can take out uh, the rook then of course also the d5 is a long-term weakness so uh, I think here maybe slightly better the smooth uh, uh, queen to h4 instead of this king to h1 idea so in the game a6 play by kasparov now f4 was what we said in the beginning as i said um, here f4 uh, f4 prevents this e5 idea black wants to do that so now uh black is left with this weak backward pawn on e6 in the game kasparov tried now this idea knight to a4 uh, knight to a5 cementing uh, then the knight on c4 on this very active square uh f5 and now we have b5 kicking with the queen queen to h4 but it's a little bit too late now uh, black has activated the pieces black is more active uh, in, in this uh, previous line i think black was still passive and this bishop to h6 tactic could work now it's a little bit too late because uh gary kasparov plays now knight to g8 uh, prevents this idea he realizes that uh, of course there are maybe some uh, tactical possibilities around the square h6 very nice defensive move and now queen to h3 we have knight to c4 bishop to c1 protecting of course the b2 pawn and now comes bishop to g5 what black wants to do of course is to get rid of the uh, dark square bishop the dark square bishop is very annoying and uh, at least continue to battle uh, in in this middle game with two knights against the knight and the bishop one of the best ways when you don't have the bishop pair on the board is at least to trade off one of these bishops it's i think one of the most important strategies when you play uh, against the bishop pair bishop to g5 normal idea we have uh, the f takes uh, e6 and now bishop to c1 rook takes c1 and now the four here knight to e3 that was uh, Gary Kasparov's preparation and here Vasily Smyslov tries knight to d5 because he wants to counterplay of course in the center but he leaves his rook hanging on f1 if you try something like rook to f3 um, it's not a problem queen to g5 will happen the queen comes very actively into the game and now uh, the main goal I think in this particular position is to get our pawn here on d4 and this knight is very very dangerous you see it's so well placed here around uh, on the square e3 very dangerous and we can even support this pawn so again i think uh, here black has a comfortable game so that's why um here vasily smith of goes for an exchange sacrifice um knight takes d5 we have knight takes f1 rook to f1 and now rook to f8 knight to f4 but now a very important move very important defensive move again knight to e7 preventing this fork on g6 in the game um 
uh, Smith of Tried Queen to G4 and now G5. Simply kicking away uh, the pieces because uh, there are of course also some threats maybe to play uh, Knight to G6 after Knight to G6, Queen to G6 and then maybe to get our Bishop here to E4 and building a Queen and Bishop battery on Lightworks and uh, deliver checkmate on H7. So that's why Gary Kasparov has to play now really some accurate defensive moves. He played G5, very important, kicking away the Knight. Uh, here the Queen has to move. Um, uh, of course, you cannot move the, the knight, you, uh, maybe something like knight to d3, will simply tr uh, trade off the rooks, here rook takes f1, bishop to f1, or we could even try queen to d5, uh, rook to uh, c2 is also a possibility, so I think from this point on, white is simply lost. So that's why here Smyslov tries a counterattack, queen to h3, attacking the weak h6 pawn, uh, we have rook to f6, and now uh, we have this idea, knight to d3, and now rook to f1, finally trading off the rooks, bishop to f1, and now king to g7, keeping the position more compact, because our pawn is really weak here, so we have to first regroup. Of course you up the exchange, but sometimes we get rushed, we rush into attacks. First we should sometimes really calm down, slow down the pace a little bit of the game, uh, really try to keep the position compact, improve the position of minor pieces, because we have of course the decisive advantage. Then when we get the pieces on the best course, then it's again maybe time to attack. Now you have several weaknesses of course in front of the king, you have to uh, be careful first. So uh, here queen to g4, we have queen to d5, uh, e4, and now queen to d4, we have h4, and now rook to f8, again attacking the bishop, bishop to e2, queen to e3, we have uh, king to g2, and now knight to g6, again uh, protecting the king, here we have h5, not a problem, uh, we have knight to e7, uh, b4, and now king to h7, king to h2, and now rook to, um, rook to d4, uh, d8 in the game, uh, e4 was played, e5 was played, and now rook takes d3, uh, after bishop to d3, queen to d3 in this position, uh, Vasily Smyslov resigned, so, okay, this wasn't maybe one of the most attractive games that we have seen so far in the series, but I really wanted to honor also Vasily Smyslov by showing one more game, uh, he uh, was much, much older, older than uh, Gary Kasparov in this match game, still a legend, of course, Vasily Smyslov, he made it to the candidates when, when we have seen uh, against whom really uh, Gary Kasparov played in this uh, tournament and also in this candidates in all of these tournaments, being in the finals against uh, Gary Kasparov and really he had some opportunities when we watch the games now, he had also good opening preparations, but Gary Kasparov was simply too sharp and he, we did, as I said, this is now our last stage of the candidates, we're moving up now to the super final against uh, uh, between Gary Kasparov and Anatoly Karpov. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. Uh, we're, as I said, I'm really looking forward to show you now this uh, super final. We'll have such a great time. I think uh, this was really an immortal match game between maybe two of the best players in chess history, Karpov and Kasparov. Be prepared. This will be wild, wild one. So, okay. Uh, meanwhile, you can watch my other uh, commented chess games from the series uh, by this Gary Kasparov saga. Uh, here's the link. And if you want to see maybe the best chess games of all time, check out my series. Here's also the link. And if you like this content, you can also subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos. And uh, chess is the best, of course.